Hello everyone, my name is Rachel Weaver. I am on faculty at Lighthouse Writers Workshop. Um, I have started to create a series of um, quick Zoom interviews uh, about some aspect of craft with another member of our faculty. So today, my next guest is Tracy Jones. Um, she has written three YA books. She is on faculty at Lighthouse Writers as well. She's also on faculty at um, Regis University's MFA program in creative writing. Right. So thank you for being here, Tracy. I appreciate it. Oh, it is my pleasure. So Have the thing about rejection. Uh -huh, yeah. So the thing I wanted us to talk about today is rejection and sadness. Um, this is a huge part of all of our lives as writers. And so I think it's important, first of all, to go ahead and recognize that that is the case, that there is no way around it. No um, way around it. And then secondly, to talk a little bit about like some, some tools maybe that you have figured out, um, some ways to sort of um, deal with it. I think mostly to help, help you not, you know, to help rejection, this level of rejection that we get um, not shut you down as a writer. So that's my main question to you. What what have you figured out in this um, path of being a writer that has helped you manage the rejection side of things? So it's really all about perspective, right? As a writer, you know that you're going to get rejection, and it's how you how you view that rejection. Is it going to be a tool that you're going to use to hone your craft to do to make your writing better? Um, it's really the, actually, Irwin Shaw said it best. He said the abs an absolutely necessary part of a writer's equipment, almost as necessary as talent, is the ability to stand up under punishment, both the punishment the world hands out and the punishment he inflicts upon himself. So you have to view rejection as an, an, as an accomplishment because if you're rejected from a publisher or an agent or a journal, first of all, you've started something and you finished it. Now, as a writer, you probably get this all the time. Oh, I should be a writer. I have so many stories in me. Oh, I, I, just, I just need to sit down and do it. Well, not only do they need to sit down and do it, they have to sit down and finish it and send it out. So the fact that you actually got rejected from Anybody in the publishing world is an accomplishment. So you have to view rejection like that, right? And then you take that rejection and you can, after you go through your five stages of grief, because really anything you write is like a child, right? It's a child that you've given birth to. And a rejection is saying, well, your kid's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> so it feels very personal. And you have to remember, it's not always personal. Writing is not like math. In math, two plus two is gonna equal four. Writing is subjective. So your story may not resonate with whoever you send it to, and that's okay. Just like you don't love everything you read, everything you write, people will not love. But there is somebody out there who's gonna love it. So you have to remember that one, two, 22 rejections. Well, 22, you might wanna reconsider <laughs> what you're sending out. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to pull back and say, is it my writing? Is it my cover letter? But one or two, you cannot take it personal. And as writers, we're very emotional. We kind of feel like, oh, this is about me. And it's not necessarily about you. It's about who you send it to, where they are emotionally, what they're looking for, what the market's doing. It is completely out of your hands. And you, so you should not take it personally. Mm -hmm. And is that... You, well, I guess I should talk about it in terms of myself. So I feel like I can think all of these things. Mm -hmm. But then um, when it happens. <laughs> oh, I think you, you, you can allow yourself to be stank, right? You can allow yourself to be upset. Like, again, you can allow yourself those five stages of grief. You can feel, feel like you, you can be pissed off. Mm -hmm. I know even when I get my edits, I am immediately irritated with my editor you're not you don't understand where i was going with this and and i look at the edits i get pissed off mm -hmm. then i have to put it aside so with your rejection you can feel pissed off but at some point you have to put it aside 
and, fig and figure out how you're going to deal with that rejection. Do you need to, to polish your work? Do you need to refine it? Uh, rejection can teach you patience. It can teach you persistence. You have to take the rejection and use it as a tool as opposed to a bludgeon for your ego and for yourself, right? Mm -hmm. You have to, it can teach you, a, it will definitely teach you about yourself initially, how you deal with rejection. But what we can also teach you is what you do with it after you get over yourself. Because there's a, there's a time when you have to get over yourself and move on. And do you think you've gotten better at this over time? Um, do you think, <laughs> is there still like that little tiny part of you? That no, thinks I'm awful at it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because it is, it feels so personal. And you have, to, you have to have a mantra, right? You have to keep saying, it's not personal, it's not personal. It is just not what they want. But it's hard to do. It's hard to do, right? I mean, even at my advanced age, it's hard to do. I feel like what you've given out is so personal. What you've given them is very personal, and what they're giving back is not. Oh, that's so a good way to think of yeah. it. That's yeah. a good way to think of it, actually. Yeah, um, and that's what you have to keep telling yourself because really you will want to just, otherwise you're going to pack up and leave, right? Sylvia Plath says, I, I love my rejection ships, slips, they show me, I try. So you have to, whatever mantra is going to get you past that initial hurt, you've got to, you've got to, you know, employ. I feel like as I have uh, accumulated more and more and more rejection over time, um, one thing I've recognized is that there is like an emotional arc that I just have to go through. Right. Um, you know, like I have to, just like you said, I have to be mad first. Right. Um, I get my editorial letter, right? They're from, wrong, right? <laughs> right. Like clearly you don't get it. Clearly they're wrong. <laughs> um, and then I have to be very honest with myself. Um, and then I have to bring my writer reviser mind um, to the page and ask the question, is right. this, is this suggestion going to make it better or make it worse? Right. Um, you know, is this person, do I think this person is right? Right. Because all rejection is not equal, right? There's a rejection where they give you, well, this didn't work for me and this didn't work. And then you can put on your writer hat and say, is, it, is that valid? Is that valid for the story I want to tell? Can I use it? And there's some rejection that is just like you just never hear from them, them again, and that is completely useless to you, right? So there are levels of rejection, and some you can use, and some you can completely disregard and be okay about disregarding that rejection. Yes, there are a lot um, on Amazon, I think, when you get to the level of <laughs> having your book out in the world. Yeah, yes. Completely disregard. But I think you're right. I think, you know, if someone has taken the time to offer up a piece of, um, you know, it's something constructive, so even, right. even if you don't agree with it, it um, you're right, it does take sort of the, um, the, the sting out of it, maybe, or the, um, like, it doesn't feel as much as... as that it's about you. I think that's right. cool. it's about the work then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's when you have to pull your big girl panties on and put your writer's hat on and say, okay, how valid do I feel this criticism, this constructive criticism is to what I'm trying to accomplish with my book? And then if you can use it, then you really have to pull your big girl panties on and actually use it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I sort of feel like I had this idea, you know, um, way back when, when I was like, I'm going to write a book. It's going to be awesome. Um, and I didn't really, you know, people were like, oh, yeah, you know, there's a lot of rejection along that path. And um, I had this really bad boyfriend, and his mom said that to me. Um, and I didn't like him or her, so I didn't listen. But I have thought of it lots of times because she was absolutely right. Um, but I didn't really anticipate how much it was going to challenge me as a, as a person. <laughs> Um, you know, because it, it, there's like this whole other piece of us as writers, I think, that has to develop along with our craft. Right. To be able to keep doing our craft, despite, you know, the fact that whatever we write is not going to please everybody, right? It's only going to please like some people and other people are going to have big opinions about it. Right. Um, and so I thought that it would just sort of be this thing, but really it is, I mean, it's a huge part of the process because if I get too caught up, 
if I get too caught up in the rejection side of things, like the what people think of it side of things, it shuts me down. In oh yeah, you can really get bogged into, you can get bogged into that, that oh, they're right and I shouldn't, you know, you can really just start beating yourself up. Mm -hmm. But you, as a writer, you have to start developing a thicker skin. And that's, and you can only develop a thick skin from being pounded on, right? It's, it's not, I mean, there's some people who are wonderful thing. <laughs> naturally confident and they're fine. But a lot of us writers are very, you know, thin skinned and emotional and rejection can really start digging a hole in your brain until you fall into the hole and you can't climb, climb out and want to write again. And so you really have, Part of what helps me is you have is realizing even the biggest names have gotten rejection. Dr. Seuss and J.K. Rowling and Stephen King and Herman Melville and I mean James Baldwin and James Joyce, all the Jameses and Meg Calvin. I mean, there's John Grisham. There's so, all the ones who are huge and making tons of money. They got rejections too. So that is one thing we have in common and. That's one thing as a writer, you just have to deal with. Right, and it seems like, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no I was, go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna say, it seems like it's more about perseverance really than anything else. It's not that, um, you know, someone who has continued to write has gotten less rejection along the way. It's just that they have persevered beyond the same level of rejection that potentially shuts other writers down. Right, and it's really about your work finding the right home. And so rejection just means that house, that publishing house is not where you, where your work can live. And that's fine. There are other places for your work to live. Right. And where there are so many of them. Where it might be more appreciated. As and well. it might be more, right. Where it might be watered and fed way more than, than other places. C.S. Lewis said one, one fails forward towards success, right? So in order to get to success, you have to fail in, in his way of thinking. And in writing, you abs that's, that's just absolutely par for the course. I agree. I think that's a great place to tie it up. Okay, well, good. <laughs> Do you have anything else that you want to share about rejection or any parting words? No, I, I actually think that especially new writers need to think that until they get their first rejection slip, their first rejection letter, they're not professional. That first rejection, first of all, again, shows you that you have done all your steps and you've actually sent something out into the world and somebody read it. It may not be for that person, but that to me means even before that first check, your first rejection letter means you're a writer. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Tracy. I appreciate you're so it. so welcome. I can't wait to teach. I think I start in August. Hopefully we'll be out and I can see you face to face. And I know, I know. <laughs> All right, bye, Tracy. All right, bye.